Welcome back to the bench. Before I get started, I just want to give everybody a big thanks and a virtual digital hug. And if you're not into that, just a big thumbs up for all the well wishes for my dad who went into the hospital for open heart surgery. And uh, he's already home now and on the road to recovery. So big thanks for that. Well, today's video subject is a question I think that needs answered. I get this comment a lot in the comment section just about every week. Somebody wants to know, and it's usually pertaining to these little amplifier boards, can I bridge the output? Well, the short answer to that is no, because these boards are already bridged on their outputs. And another question might be is if they can connect the outputs together. And that might be a maybe. And we have a bench marauder kitty cat going by. So yeah, that's a maybe. And we'll take a look at bridging and paralleling amps to see if it's something that might be worthwhile. I've talked about bridging and paralleling amplifiers in previous videos, but I'll just run through it here real quick. So we have our triangle amplifier signal in standard configuration where you have the load connected to the output and the other end connected to the ground. And we'll say, for example, this amplifier is connected to a 12 volt supply. Well, the amplifier output peak to peak voltage cannot exceed the power supply voltage. So that would be 12 volts peak to peak. And in the real world, it really can't even get up that high. There'll be some loss in the circuit preventing it from reaching the full power supply rail voltage. So just to keep it simple, we'll say that the output waveform can swing from rail to rail. And again, with 12 volt supply, we can get 12 volts peak to peak. And we'll also say we have a 8 ohm load or an 8 ohm speaker we want to connect to the output. So what would be our maximum clean power in that case? 12 volts peak to peak would be 4.24 volts RMS. And if we run the calculations, which is the RMS voltage squared divided by the load impedance would give us 2.25 watts. That may not be enough wattage for your purposes. How can you improve on that, given our limitations of our supply voltage? Well, you could drop this to a 4 ohm load. That would double your power. Well, what we can do is look at a bridged configuration. Now in a bridge configuration we have two amplifiers and these can be inside one integrated circuit by the way. They don't have to be but they can be. They could be discrete circuits as well. But what we do is we take a signal, send it into one amplifier and for the other amplifier we invert that signal then send it into the amplifier. So on the first amplifier we get this waveform. On the second amplifier we get this inverted waveform. Now these look like they would cancel out but we are connecting the load across the outputs and you have let's say the at the peak of the positive swing on the first amplifier we have 6 volts and because this one is inverted, it'll be a negative 6 volts. So you have a difference of 12 volts in this case. Mathematically, it's plus 6 minus a negative 6 volts. The two negatives become a positive, so that's how that works. Kind of a differentiation here. And when this reaches a negative 6 volt peak on the first amplifier, this is a positive and the math works as negative 6 minus a positive 6 equals negative 12. 
So what we've done here is double the output swing. This now is a 24 volts peak to peak or 8.48 volts RMS. And with our 8 ohm load example, we have now reached 9 watts at 8 ohms. We have reached 9 watts. So we have quadrupled our output power by using the bridge configuration. So how is it quadrupled? Well, when you double the voltage into the same load resistance, or in this case impedance, you're also going to double that current. So you end up with four times the output power. There is one catch though with bridging an amplifier is because you're doubling the current into the same load resistance because that voltage is doubled, you have to make sure that the amplifiers can handle that double current. And finally we have what is called paralleling amplifiers. So in this case we take two amplifiers, we feed it the exact same signal, and we connect the outputs together and then to the load which is connected to ground. Well in this case we are not going to increase the output swing any. Again with our example we'll say we have a 8 ohm load and same 12 volt supply. So we end up with the same output power as what we did with an 8 ohm load. Now because each amplifier is handling half the current in the real world you'll get a slightly more output power because of less losses in the amplifiers and we will take a look at that when we do the demonstration here momentarily. It is very important that the signals are exactly the same that enter both amplifiers and the amplifiers have the have to have the exact same gain the signal has to be exactly the same. Because in the real world that's not going to be the case, we have to put current sharing resistors in each of the outputs. I'm not showing it here, but like I say, each output must have a current sharing resistor. The benefit of this is because each amplifier is now handling half the current, you can use a much lower load impedance. You could go down to say 2 ohms and get 9 watts of output. But you're getting into speaker impedances that are not really common. Most people have one speaker that's already in a cabinet. They just want to hook it up. More than likely it will be an 8 ohm speaker. In some cases it could be 4 ohms. So that's why we mainly look to the bridged circuit to get more output voltage so we can get more power into our 8 ohm load. As usual on my channel I like to give a little demonstration of what I just mentioned. So I'm going to take this TDA 7297 amp board and we'll hook it up and check the performance. Now this chip has two channels they're both bridged and it's uh, designed only to be used with 8 ohm loads. You really should not use it with 4 ohm loads, but we're going to put 4 ohms on it anyway and see how the output changes. So I'm going to supply it with 12 volts, hook it up to the resistor here, 8 ohm load, and input a signal and we'll get a measurement of the output and then we'll uh, try 4 ohms and then I'll parallel it and see how that works. Okay, I have the 8 ohm load connected and it's just one channel only. So I'll crank it up to clipping. There you can see it's clipping. And we'll tune that out so we can get the maximum power before clipping. And I'm going to say right around there. Now well, maybe a little bit less. Okay. Uh, we'll go with 6.5 volts RMS. So we end up with 5.3 watts. That's quite a bit less than the 9 watts. That's because, like I said, amplifiers cannot swing all the way to the rails. 
So what I'll do now is hook up a 4 ohm load. Okay, now I have a 4 ohm load connected. And you can see that it's clipping and we'll dial that out. 4.9 and we'll just say 5 volts. So yeah, the output really collapsed with the 4 ohm load. It's dropped considerably. So we end up with only 6.25 watts. So definitely do not connect 4 ohm loads to this because you can see how the amplifier is really struggling with that. Okay, I've hooked up the amp and bridged parallel. On each output there is a resistor, so there's 4.1 ohm, in other words, 100 milliohms resistor. There's one here, one here, and I really don't want to move this thing because it might short. And there's one here and one here. Why do they use such a blindingly bright blue LED? So here is how it's set up. Each output has that 0.1 ohm resistor, and of course they're paralleled and then bridged together with the load in between there. Okay, I have it hooked up with the 8 ohm load. You can see it's clipping. We'll tune that out and get a nice clean sine wave. Right about there, I would say. We have 6.76 volts, 5.71 watts. So we're doing a little better than just having one channel with the 8 ohm loads. The reason for that is because, like I said with that drawing, the amplifiers are splitting the current because there's two of them parallel together. It allows the output swing to go a little higher. Even though there is some loss in those resistors, a minor loss, but you end up with a little bit more. Okay, now here's the real test. Will we get much better output with the 4 ohm load? Okay, I have the 4 ohm load hooked up. And we'll adjust this to the point just before clipping. Get our max clean output. And about 6.06 volts. So yes, we did much better than just with one channel. I was hoping for a little better but we got 9.2 watts and with the forum load you're going to increase the current of course and you will gain some more losses in those sharing resistors. So we are doing a little better than the 6. Point, what was it 25 or something like that watts we had before. And just a couple final thoughts before I close the video. Can you parallel these Class D boards the same way? Well, sure, if they have the output filters, which you can tell by the coils, you know, because they are bridged, they'll have two per output. And you can bridge them the same way. The ones you probably shouldn't bridge are the ones that are the filterless type. And I've reviewed some of those before. The reason is, you know, they're sending the pulse with modulation signal out to the pins and they're relying on the speaker's inductance to filter that away. However, if you try to parallel that together and for some reason if the clock is not in phase with each channel, I don't know why it wouldn't be, but it's a possibility, you could run into a problem. And in the case of this board where they have two separate chips each one has its own clock and they're not going to be in sync with each other so I would avoid doing that with the filterless type class D boards well that's it hopefully it answered your questions I always kind of make a long video just to answer a simple question but it was kind of fun playing around on the bench and we'll catch you in the next video thanks for watching